For a long time, we were dependent on CT and bone scan for detection of metastasis for metastatic prostate cancer. Um, and now that we have PSMA um, PET imaging, uh, we're able to detect early signs of uh, what we call PSMA AVID, um, you know, micrometastatic disease um, at an earlier disease setting. So many people uh, uh, um, of my colleagues have called this a more accurate staging, but it is also representative, we think, of an earlier disease uh, stage than um, patients who have truly detectable lesions on CT and bone scan, the conventional imaging. Um, so it really opens up a new category of patients who are kind of not quite localized, but yet not quite uh, fully metastatic um, based on conventional imaging. So there's, there's this uh, middle uh, early disease setting of PSMA AVID uh, based on PSMA PET imaging, um, a new disease state, if you will. So we took a deep dive on patients who um, had undergone uh, PSMA PET imaging at uh, UT Southwestern. Um, so it was a retrospective um, study, um, but it really gives us some clues about biology of disease. Um, so what we found was that people with PSMA PET positive but CT negative um, uh, metastatic disease um, were, uh, they had better prognosis um, and better outcomes uh, than pa patients who had PSMA positive and CT positive disease. So those curves separated nicely in terms of PSA progression-free survival as well as um, time to castration resistance. Um, so this is really a uh, early disease biology. It's very sensitive to hormonal therapy and these patients ultimately do better in the longer term. The initial trials that for metastatic hormone sensitive prostate cancer only had a CT and bone scan imaging to define those patient populations. So if you look at our trials like um, charted, latitude, stampede, um, and also the Enza, Enza Met, um, arches, uh, la, um, uh, Titan, um, and all of those trials defined metastatic hormone sensitive prostate cancer um, by CT and bone scan, right? So this is a more advanced uh, patient population. And what we, sh um, sh what we showed in this study was that there are differences in patients, more higher patients um, uh, diagnosed with de novo metastatic disease um, in those patient populations, and also in um, the patients who had um, uh, the higher uh, PSAs at the time of um, CT positive, uh, CT and bone scan positivity versus um, PSAs. PSMA uh, positivity on the PET scans. Um, so it really is a different um, category of disease and we should be trying to counsel our patients accordingly uh, based on um, their disease biology. So if it's only PSMA positive on PET scans but CT bone scan negative, you know, that, that's a much better outlook um, and a more indolent biology, if you will. So this is a really important question for the field. And um, given all the limitations of a retrospective study, um, we have patients in our uh, cancer center who have had uh, either intensification with an AR-targeted agent on top of their androgen deprivation or patients who have been treated just with androgen deprivation. And what we showed in this, uh, in this deep dive is that um, the patients um, uh, who, were, uh, who had AR intensification with another oral therapy um, had very similar outcomes in terms of uh, PSA progression, in terms of time to castration resistance as the patients who only had ADT alone. Um, now, the, the, the jury is definitely still out, right? There's multiple prospective trials um, that are ongoing um, that will help us answer that question. But the good news is um, that these patients ultimately do very well and very similarly um, if we treat them with ADT alone or with ADT and and um, AR targeted therapies. Um, so, you know, there's patients who will say, you know, I see, you know, PSMA PET, I see the lesion, right? And this is metastatic disease. And, you know, we'll say, yes, you're absolutely right, but these patients do very well overall. And despite giving uh, just hormonal suppression or adding an AR targeted therapy, we're doing very similarly in terms of overall outcomes. So that's reassuring.
So as we learn more about a new disease state, there's always new research that needs to be done and new prospective trials. Um, so I just told you that we saw very similar outcomes for androgen receptor intensification, right, with added therapy. Is that a good thing? We don't know. You know how many patients are we over-treating? Um, so there are many, um, well, there are several um, uh, prospective large phase three trials that will help us answer that question. Um, one in the cooperative groups um, is run by ECOG Akron called Indicate. Another one um, that um, I just learned about this conference is called PSMA Care. Uh, it's using uh, PSMA uh, lutetium in that early PSMA positive but CT negative population. Um, and then another one is called Aristep. So Bayer is running a trial of PSMA positive disease uh, treated with um, darolutamide and, and, and androgen deprivation versus androgen deprivation in this early category. And so um, I think we will see um, in the next coming years um, what uh, prospective randomization looks like and uh, whether these um, results um, give us a good inkling or not. Um, you know, the jury really is still out and I think these, um, these prospective trials are super important to help us define what is the best treatment option for these patients and how can we move forward um, with uh, treating them to achieve the most optimal outcomes. Mm -hmm.